there! Nice to see you along for the ride again. Well, we're going to do another box opening and review video because uh, the weather's just not been conducive to running trains in the garden. It's just been so wet, uh, plenty of snow. In fact, it's snowing at the moment and blowing a gale. We'll try our luck again in another week. But in the meantime, I've been out buying stuff because, well, it seemed like a really good thing to do. And uh, I've been to Frisinghall Model Railways in Frisinghall, uh, strangely enough. And uh, one of the things that I got is uh, this triple set and it's a, a three wagon set, a uh, special edition of Annesley coal wagons uh, for the colliery at Annesley um, as was. And this is actually a limited edition that was produced exclusively for the model centre or TMC. Uh, what used to be, once upon a time, uh, the Trafford Model Centre. But Frising Hall Model Railways and uh, TMC um, have a bit of a deal going, so you can get um, some of each other's special commissions at each location. So, because go the Gothland area of North Yorkshire is quite difficult for me to get to, it's quite useful to be able to get these limited editions from there, so you can see them in the flash before you buy them rather than getting the mail order. So we can see here, we've got the newest style Batman packaging, the uh, the blue and the red, um, very much sort of Superman-y sort of colours. And we've got the three wagons fitting in the box there. This is catalogue number 37-081X. And again, the X signifies it's a special commission, because with the, um, the limited edition stuff, uh, what they do is they start from the letter Z and work the way back through the alphabet, rather than with the standard release stuff starts at the beginning of the alphabet uh, with the, um, the subsequent runs. Now, uh, I'm not sure whether Backman has done the Annesley Colliery Wagon in the main range. I suspect that at some point they must have done because they have done so many of these private owner wagons. They're probably a really good earner for Backman because um, they've been able to churn them out in so many different colourful liveries and there's been a lot of special commissions uh, with various liveries, with various shops, generally picking collieries that were um, unique to the local area of that shop. Interesting enough for TMC, uh, Annesley Collieries uh, was in Annesley in uh, Nottinghamshire, so actually a little bit uh, out of their area, but uh, they're quite handy for me because I quite like the Great Central Railway liveried uh, pre-grouping locomotives that do turn up from time to time through Backman, usually uh, commissioned either through the Collectors Club or the National Railway Museum has done a couple as well. And these are going to be nice wagons to go with either the um, the 9J or the 8K or the Butler Henderson. Um, so uh, let's, let's open this up and have a look and see what we've got in here. We've got the standard plastic blister on the inside. Again, with the newer wagons, there's none of that awful paper card in there that uh, gets in the way when you try and put these back in. Uh, there is no limited edition certificate with these. Some limited editions come with a certificate, and certainly the ones from the Aerith Model Railway Society that we've reviewed before. Uh, I showed you the certificates with those. But with this, there isn't any, but uh, we've got there the three wagons, and let's just sit them out from there fit in there neatly and again they've all got a little bit of uh, it's like a soft flexible plastic fill and this really is just so that the um, the plastic inner doesn't rub and damage in transit because these have got to come a very very long way they're coming from China so uh, you know if it's a rough sea on the boat you don't want anything to rub and get damaged so we'll just take those out and put them to one side. I do keep these because uh, I've got OCD and I like to keep all the boxes and all the packaging. But we can see there, it's the same livery on all three of these wagons. They're the um, seven plank end door wagons and that means that as you can see there, there's a representation on them of the end tipping door and these doors would be hinged. Um, you could unlock them and then tip the entire wagon up and the coal would all come out as one. Um, so it was one of several different ways that wagons could be unloaded. Uh, and all three of these wagons are the same. Now, back in the sort of um, the, the pre Second World War period, certainly, um, all the collieries tended to have their own specific dedicated fleets of wagons that were owned by them. This was before the National Coal Board, so they weren't nationalised. And what you'd find is that uh, a private company would own one or more collieries um, and 
you know, all around the country, there'd be lots and lots of these different companies running these different mines. Now, the wagons probably wouldn't have travelled that widely um, around the country. It's not like in this day and age where uh, a coal wagon could be used all over the country. Back then, unless a customer had a very specific need for a specific grade of coal, uh, the coal tended to be uh, travel a fairly short distance from the colliery because you know, with a similar grade of coal, why would you want to buy from uh, the Annesley Colliery in uh, Nottinghamshire if you were, say, based down on the south coast? Of course, you'd source that coal from uh, a more local colliery to you. However, with certain mines, like the Welsh Anthracite mines, there was a specific need for that type of grade of coal that you could only get from that particular area, so those wagons might have been much more widely travelled. We can see on these wagons, it's um, a lovely sort of maroon colour with the white lettering picked out with a, a black uh, sort of uh, serif around the edges. And we've got three different running numbers. So we've got number 191, number 194 and number 198. So they're fairly close in the number sequence and that would fit with them all being exactly the same design of wagon. And when we look closer on these later on and we get some good close-ups, what we'll see is that uh, the wagon builder's plates will be visible. And these were all built by um, Eastwood uh, Wagon Works in Chesterfield. So they'd have all probably been built as one of a job lot of uh, wagons for the colliery. Uh, but from the, the numbers you can see that there probably would have been quite a large fleet just for that one set of collieries. We've got the metalwork picked out in black and uh, certainly back in the day uh, a lot of um, companies took great pains in uh, painting up their wagons and it was actually quite a boom industry for wagon painters and a lot of collieries would have had one or more of these people on staff whose job was solely to paint the wagons and these were used almost like a, a mobile advertising hoarding for the company but when the second world war came along a lot of these wagons were pooled and taken into effectively common ownership um, so certainly during the second world war the wagons would have um, probably strayed quite far away from the colliery and been seen all over the country and working into all sorts of other collieries um, but they would have deteriorated in condition um, with a general lack of maintenance and certainly after the Second World War the wagons were then sort of taken into nationalised ownership so they wouldn't really have ever gone back to the, the colliery and would have eventually completely lost their livery if they were repainted at all before they were withdrawn. But these show the wagons in their heyday, in the golden day, probably in the 1930s uh, when a lot of pride was taken in the wagon fleets. There isn't really much else we can say about them. Uh, they've got the latest style Backman coupling, so they're not cranked. And Backman, originally when these were first released in the Blue, uh, blue Ribbon uh, branch line range, the NEM pockets were at the wrong height, so to compensate for this, Backman had cranked couplings. Uh, and a lot of criticism uh, was levelled at them for this, because it meant if you wanted to change the couplings to another uh, type of coupling to fit into the NEM pockets, um, you had to uh, uh, kind of compensate for that difference in height. But later on, Backman did modify the tooling, and these are the modified types. So if you want to change the couplings, say for, for example, KD couplings, um, it's a, a simple drop-in fit. We've got a representation as well inside of the bottom opening doors, and these would be for if these went to coal drops for a, a coal merchant, um, they'd be able to dump their load through the bottom and down into the hopper underneath the track. And you probably have a couple of blokes stood inside the wagon desperately shoveling the last of the coal down through these um, in the bottom. And of course you've got the end tipping uh, doors for if you want to tip the entire lot in one go. And also side opening doors in much simpler coal yards, generally even just in um, local goods yards, a coal merchant uh, would be able to just drop the doors and shovel the coal straight out either onto the floor or onto the back of their cart or, or lorry. So there we have it, another great offering from Backman um, and uh, TMC, bought through FMR, Frizenhall Model Railways, 
and um, there's a lot of other limited edition wagons that uh, they do carry. These are the only private owner ones that they've currently got available, at least that I saw in the shop, special edition, but I think they have done some in the past. Um, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to share this video, like it too, and uh, look back through all of our videos and you'll see all the other stuff that we've been doing. Anyway, yeah, do come along for our next video and enjoy watching. This is me, Jenny Kirk, saying take very good care of yourself and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. ...in Frising Hall, uh, strangely enough. I'm getting hold of this so I can... Oh, right. <laughs> I thought you were going, stop. Hammer time. <laughs>